Today, it is likely you have been asked to self-isolate, and as such, I want to help you out with a number of ways that your smart home gear can help you with the new realities of your life. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation or really I'm going to take the frustration out of self-isolation by using your smart home gear you already have. So let's go through a number of ways right now that you can use existing technology to help with this new situation. It's easy to contribute your idle computing power through the folding at home project. Now I happen to join Linus Tech Tips and their team in order to contribute to COVID-19 right now and the research going on with that. This is a simple installation process and you can actually choose whether or not to only allow your computer to fold when it is idle and or you can choose your different CPUs or GPUs that are available for this. Regardless, every contribution you make here in terms of computing power helps scientists to figure out a number of diseases diseases. A lot of us are currently doing a lot of video meetings and this is widespread across a number of services but one of the services is Zoom and Zoom gives you a couple of different options for actually Chromecast or using your Chromecast devices so right now it's not a lot of fun to sit there and hold a tablet or a phone towards your face and have to look at it the entire time so what you can actually do is use your Chromecast. Now, there's a couple of different methods. You can screen mirror on a lot of Android phones. This works really well with Chromecast devices. The other method that you can use is actually to push that to a web browser. So the Chrome web browser on a PC, you can go ahead and use that and then you can cast that feed to any of your TV. So you have a couple of different options here. This isn't just for Zoom, but Zoom gives you that extra option by pushing to a web-based interface. Speaking of video conferencing services, one of the great options right now is Google's Duo service. Now, the reason I suggest this is it's actually been raised in terms of a limit from eight to 12. Now, you can't do that on a smart display, so don't even try and bring 12 people into a call on a smart display, but you can do it on a phone or a tablet. If we're pretending that you need a webcam, well, you can actually repurpose one of your wise cams right now so what you can do is go to wise's website I'll leave a link down below to their website but I'll also leave a link to a tutorial that I've created now the wise cams can be converted using the new firmware that wise has released they're trying to do a lot to help people right now and that new firmware allows you to basically plug this into a PC and, and or a Mac actually, and use it as a $20 webcam. Now I don't have to tell you guys, but I'm going to say it anyways. Hands-free control is so important right now in your own smart home. And this is especially true if you are worried about transmitting to those different surfaces that are contacted a lot. So I'm recommending right now a two-phase approach because you need the ability to customize your situation and that can go through the voice assistance. The other part of the smart home control that you need is one of those smart home hubs or a system like WISE that has the sensors and the ability to turn on and off lights. Now this is what I mean by having that extra voice control. So you know, let's say you have a routine set up to turn on your entire lighting system in your living room but in the moment you just feel like having one light on. Well, that's what voice commands are great for. You're not touching any of the surfaces. This is also really true, I think, when you're getting in and out of your car. This is a really important component and that's why I recommend systems like SwitchBot right here. So SwitchBot can be used in a lot of great scenarios to touch buttons that are otherwise not smart. So this is a really great system with their hub and with these SwitchBot buttons for you to go ahead and use. A lot of our voice assistants can provide us a lot of great information and I'm even seeing on the smart displays a little bit of an interface coming up 
on my Google Nest Hub Max to tell me exactly what's going on in the world. It's a quick button. Now, let me show you what these different voice assistants can do for you right now. The first thing with Google Assistant Smart Displays is there's actually a button on there to press that you get five steps that you can use. And if you tap the learn more button, you also get this video. You can adopt to protect yourself. What's the latest on coronavirus? Okay, news about coronavirus. Of releasing the data projections he was pressed on that quite a bit what do i do if i think i have covid19 if you think you have covid19 i can ask you a few questions based on cdc guidelines first of all do you feel sick yes the most common symptoms of covid19 are fever cough and shortness of breath help me wash my hands wash 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 your hands for 40 seconds please we're having fun we're almost done now let's get you a towel help me wash my hands okay here we go. Wash your hands. Everybody. Everybody. Wash your hands. This is a Germany only one, but head to the URL on screen right now if you're in Germany to contribute your data to your country's efforts to controlling COVID-19. We are oftentimes separated from our friends and family, and we've always already talked about some of the conferencing services, you know, Google Duo to be able to chat with them. My family's using Google Duo in some cases. We're using FaceTime in other cases. There's a lot of different solutions that way. But what if you just want to help monitor the situation with someone and you're not able to be there? There's a couple of solutions that I think are really easy to implement right now. And and will be really effective. Now, you can look at a smart home camera, but you have to think about that privacy, that security capability. Something that's even easier is I think the Flick Hub with a Flick button right now. So you can even just buy the button, have it Bluetooth connect to the smartphone in that, in that place. But what you can essentially do is hand this button to someone and every time they click it, it sends a text message. And you can put something as simple as, I'm okay, just checking in. Something to that effect that you can know when they're okay, when they get out of bed. And it's a really simple and quick solution that they don't have to do anything except press that flick button. One way I think you can help as automators is when you do go out and you purchase a smart display or a smart speaker. Now the smart displays are obviously really important for that video conferencing or that video call capability. You can give them the ability to simply call anyone on their contact contact list, you can do almost all of the setup over in your place and then simply bring the product there, do a little bit of setup, clean the device and leave and give them the access and the capability to receive a Google Duo call, an Amazon voice or video call and really you're just giving them that ability to contact you at any time by just using their voice. And let's be honest, with all of this, at some level you've just got to find a way to pass the time. And one of the best ways is actually to start installing smart home products that are going to provide a good benefit to you and your home after this is all over. And I think one of the really easy projects to take on is to start automating with a platform with a smart home hub some of the best things I think you can do is just install leak sensors they are so simple they are effectively something that you set on the ground I have a number of different models that I'm showing you right now and they simply connect to smart home hubs this will provide you peace of mind throughout your life going forward when you do get to leave your home now your kids are probably some of the biggest question marks in your life right now and I pretty produced a massive video with 46 different ideas for ways you could entertain them within your smart home. There are ways that are complicated, there are ways that are simple, but there are a ton of different ways. 46 to be exact. So go watch that video guys. Otherwise, thanks for watching and of course, don't hate, automate.